Hey friends, thanks for joining us today. I'm here with my daughter Kayla Lanier, a certified fitness specialist, and we're talking about anxiety. This is the first episode in our anxiety series called What's Wrong With Me? Welcome to Renewed Hope Women's Wellness. I'm Happy Sperling, wife, mom of seven, board certified holistic health practitioner, and owner of Renewed Hope Nutrition Center. After years of searching for the answers to my own health issues, I grew tired of always being told there was nothing wrong when I knew something wasn't right. If you're searching for answers to, this is the place for you. Whether you're a college student, mom, businesswoman, going through menopause, or anything in between, I'm here to empower you and teach you how to become your own health advocate. I'm here to renew your hope and let you know you are not alone. So let's start this journey together. My own story with anxiety started years ago, probably 15 years ago now, where I actually just was introduced to anxiety by having a panic attack in the middle of the night that to me seemed to come out of nowhere. But looking back now, I realized that there were a whole lot of things that led up to that moment and things I hadn't dealt with um, that I thought I had actually handled pretty well. And my body unfortunately told me that I didn't handle it very well and so I kind of thought of it like when the bucket of emotion and stress and all the things in life was filled up it spilled out and it was a panic attack which was absolutely horrible Um, landed me in the ER with no help whatsoever and then to multiple doctor's visits where I was just continually told that everything's fine Uh, you just have a lot of stress here's a medication that might help But in the center of my very being, I thought this is not the answer because this kind of, this has to have a root. Like I want to know why I have anxiety, not here's something to help you forget about it, but actually be able to say, wow, there's a reason or multiple reasons for this. And when I find those, I can actually start to uncover that and find some healing in it. But I think a lot of times we want to just cover it up, put a bandaid on it, not talk about it, pretend like it's not there that we're really holding our life together pretty well, but inside, that's not what's happening. So that kind of led me on a journey to try to find out for myself the root causes of my anxiety because I felt like I had come to a dead end with all the paths that I had tried. And a lot of the things, to be honest, the tips and the self-help and all those things really weren't doing anything for me. And so that led me to this journey where I went into practice to help people with anxiety after I had found out the roots and causes of mine. And I'm extremely passionate about helping women understand there is something wrong with you and you do deserve to find out what it is. And there are ways to do that and not really settle for the standard protocol, which is a medication. And medications are fine if that helps someone get through a difficult time or if that's something that they choose to to do but for my own story I just needed answers beyond that and I'm very thankful that I did that because the journey has taught me so much about who I am how my body works why anxiety and panic attacks happen in the first place and what we can do about it because there's lots of things that we can do that actually work so that you don't have to manage your anxiety the rest of your life but you can truly be healed from it but it is a lot of work Um, so I just wanted to share some of the things that I found out along the way and I'm still learning I learn from my clients as much as I learn from myself so it's exciting to be able to offer people hope beyond what they've been told Wow, so I was literally brought to tears listening to you share that, Mom. You were literally a super mom the entirety of my childhood. And um, I'm like gripping my coffee cup over here, just like staring at you with tears in my eyes like, wow, I, I didn't know that you struggled that much. To be honest, hearing it now, you know, it, it really hits home for me. Now that I'm 27 and um, I'm trying to like adult and make it through that journey of, um, you know, paying bills, working a nine to five, you know, trying to pursue my dreams also. And, you know, I never thought in a million years I would struggle with the same thing also. Hit with a panic attack 
first year into my marriage, trying to, you know, be the perfect wife and make the perfect dinner and do the perfect things. I mean, even as I speak right now, my voice is shaking because it's all welling up within my heart. Anyways, anxiety is real. I think the trauma that you experience throughout your life, it settles in places, unknown places within our hearts, and it comes up in the most strangest times. I think when I'm driving on the road, honestly, and I get behind some slow old man, <laughs> like... I just, I grip the steering wheel so fiercely and it's all I can do to not say some colorful things. Uh, and I mean, I just think that's just part of, you know, being a human and I, I don't want to like just exhaust the, the topic of anxiety as we talk about this tonight, but I do want to express that there's so much more to it than what is on the surface in media and what you see in your social circle when people talk about anxiety. They're like, well, you should try this or that, you know you know, sniff some eucalyptus or go out and do some yoga, you know, and I tried all that. I did that. I practiced that since I was a teen, you know, I was like, anxiety will not touch me because I do all the right things. You know, I wake up and I journal and, you know, I pray and I, I try to be spiritual in, in every aspect that I can. But sometimes, you know, you're just you're on, you hit rock bottom and it's hard to, it's hard to get up, you know, it's hard right. to fight the day to day. But I mean, I don't know, mom, that was, that was a pretty rough example of my short journey with anxiety, but have any thoughts on that? Well, and, and I think it's something that we can't compare someone else's anxiety with our own because though I would think at times, well, so-and-so has an anxiety issue and they're they're handling it so much better than I am but you never know someone else's story inside and then also knowing that one panic attack in your life is too many you know and so whether someone's had one or multiple ones it you know it's it's listening to people letting them be heard and trying to find a way to be real and let people know that this is this is a real problem over it's estimated right now that over 300 million people struggle with anxiety Gosh, that's, that's like insane. one in five people and when you think about that I know that as I have tried to find out during these years you know really what's wrong with me why do, why do I have anxiety what did I do wrong? What am I not doing that I should be doing? And then I look at that and think, I'm not alone because you can feel very alone and that kind of forces you to isolate yourself because you're not sure what to expect out of yourself and that's a very scary place to be in and I think just knowing that in practice often I think so many times I hear people's story about their anxiety and sometimes all I can do initially is just hear them and I think that is really the most valuable thing you can do for someone is listen to their story. Right. Right. And honestly, let them know they've been heard. I think the most frustrating thing for me was going to doctors repeatedly, just so hopeless and thinking, Not being heard. yeah, thinking, just listen to me. And they would hear the first part I have anxiety and panic attacks. And then I felt like after that, in my experience, and that's not that everyone's practitioners like that, but it was just kind of a closed door. I even had one doctor get very angry with me because she had handed me. Me a prescription and I said to her I you know I appreciate that but there's something wrong with me and I need to know what it is right. like personally I have to find out what's going on and she actually stood up she laid the prescription down on my lap and said if you're not going to use the tools in the toolbox then I can't help and closed the door and left me wow. and I thought wow I thought oh my goodness that this is it there is no answers and the hopelessness just settled on me and I sat there and cried like a baby of course I mean <laughs> seeing know? feeling not having a way out I mean well and being told that there's one you're crazy answer. yeah you know, like and just justifying what like everyone is anxious about because right. like in the end like when you have a panic attack you feel like you're going insane yeah, and that's all I needed was somebody to tell me that I wasn't crazy, and I felt like I wasn't hearing that at all. I was actually probably getting confirmation that maybe I was a little crazy. Well, yeah, you know, being and, the same conclusion, the same diagnosis with everyone that you yeah. saw. So that that's what led me to really go deeper, and I think that that's very empowering. So in that moment when I felt powerless, when I left there that day, I thought, no, I'm I'm gonna ask the Lord to help me. I want to find out 
out what this answer is. And it started a quest to be my own researcher, to be my own advocate. And I started just find, reading everything that I could, Googling everything that I could to say, what are the root causes of anxiety? What's going on with me? And then that led me into really finding out about vitamin D levels and your ferritin levels and your fasting insulin levels. Like there were so many connections for me with my blood sugar and with my deficiencies in my vitamins that are a very big deal. And had I not addressed that, I don't think I would have been able to come so far in it. And it's so unknown. People don't know, you know, anything about vitamins or the importance of caffeine intake. How much are you taking in, you know, and... I think you unveiled something really important here, and it was the fact that you didn't ignore the voice in the back of your head that kept telling you that there was more to what you were going right. through. And I think that's a big key factor in what we're trying to talk about in, in this podcast. Exactly. Yeah, and I don't. I think we don't need to settle for an answer when we know that there's something more. There's a reason we have that within us that that pushes us beyond to say, "I'm not settled with this. I don't have peace about this." And I actually found out later through another practitioner. It was actually when I left that doctor's office that day, I was met by a friend that we had in the area. And he said, I, I was crying. I was a mess. And I was like, I don't, he said, what's wrong? And I was like, nobody knows what's wrong. And, <laughs> and he felt so bad for me that he said, hold on a minute. And he actually was a human resource worker there at the doctor's office that I was at. And he said, I want you to come see somebody. And he took me into a doctor that was a friend of his. And here I was as a crying mess. I didn't know him from Adam. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. It doesn't <laughs> sure. matter at this point. And he immediately, I just told him the symptoms that I was having. And yes, I was having panic attacks, but they were happening during the night. And he said, I know what's wrong with you. And I thought, oh, could that be real? Could that really? be true? Do you really believe me? <laughs> and he actually led him to discover that I had had an issue structurally in my throat that Which I had had. <laughs> That. Yeah, that I'd had since I was little. So the Slotsky ring in my uh, throat is supposed to, it's supposed to expand as you age, but some people don't have that happen. So I still had this tiny throat obstruction that I didn't even know about. I had always had trouble swallowing, but I never, I never really put that with anything. So ended up, I did get some testing and one thing that was the problem that actually probably started the trigger, it wasn't the root of my anxiety, was the fact that when I would go to sleep at night, that little closure would actually collapse. And then so I wasn't breathing and I was waking up in a panic attack and which was causing more anxiety. Yeah. And then once you have one panic attack, there you go. That's all you ever yeah, need in your life. Cause I mean, the, the fear of having another one is like it's totally a panic attack. A panic attack. And that's how, you know, people understand is like, yeah, that having one makes you forever afraid you're going to have another one, uh, which isn't good too. But, um, you know, he said to me something that I'll never forget. He said, are you on any medication? And I said, no, um, I'm not. And he said, well, it's a very good thing because the only thing waking you up at night was that gasping for air that you were doing. And he said, had you been very sedated, that may not have happened. And I thought, I knew it. I knew it. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't. But then that set off a cascade, even after the structural problem was corrected, which they were able to do in a very short procedure. I was left with the anxiety and the fear, the fear of having a panic attack that was literally crippling. So for about four years, when you guys were little, I really didn't go anywhere. Socially, I didn't go visit because it was too unpredictable for me, you know, that I felt like I needed to control my environment because I couldn't control what's happening inside. Sticking to a routine, something that's safe, which is not entirely bad. Sometimes that's important, but you know, I mean, after a while it does get old, you know. It does, yeah, and it does become more of a cage that you make for self. Yeah, and I think that it's like a cloud that followed me where you feel like I was managing it pretty well, but it was kind of always there. And I really, that's what led me to find out the other things, the deficiencies, the testing that I ran on myself, all of those things that I then carried into practice because I want women to understand that if there's something wrong with you and you know that in your heart, don't settle for any other answers until you find out what it is Uh, because we're given that as a gift 
And so if we fight against it or convince, let other people convince us otherwise, you know, we really sell ourselves short on getting to the solution of the problem instead of just putting a big Band-Aid over it, you know. Exactly. Dealing with it. So Exactly. Anyway, there, there is help for anxiety. It's just a process. It takes a while to get to the place that I got to. Yes, I had a structural issue that prompted the panic attack, but I fully believe it was coming anyway because mm, I was on course. overload, you know. And, and too much. Yeah. yeah, too many, like, comparison to other people, to being a great mom, like you said, or be the best wife, or all those mm. things we put on ourselves. You know, that, that really aren't what we're supposed to get under, you know, the bondage that comes from that. Right. Uh, and, and these expectations are often fairy tales we make up for ourselves because we, we want to strive for something. We want to live to a higher standard. We want to, and especially if you're a perfectionist, I mean, that will literally, <laughs> like, eat you alive. And you're still the super mom, but, <laughs> no, like... That's an illusion. <laughs> absolutely not. And I'm sure everyone else would agree. But it's one of those things, you know, it's just everyone deals with it. But, you know, there's so much more out there that you can utilize to get rid of anxiety and also to, to heal. Absolutely. Well, Mom finished our coffee, so I guess it's time to stop talking. <laughs> exactly. When the coffee's gone, the conversation usually goes too. Thank you so much for listening. If this podcast inspired you or encouraged you in some way, please leave us a review or share this episode with a friend. If you need help connecting the dots of your own health journey, I would love to help you with that. You can reach me via the link below to set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation. You can also connect with us by joining our free Facebook community, which is linked below, or at healthywithhappyspurling.com. Until next time.